our two catamaran tours here on our show tonight we take a look at the port of costa rica with our island tour guide roy from costa rica open tours shelly is covering some more tips and tricks for new cruisers from her vast storage of knowledge I'll be looking at the flora and fauna of Costa Rica shoreline. And of course, we have another great photo of the week sent in by one of you. Get your questions ready for our guests because you're watching Cruise Week TV Live. Our show this week is brought to you by the folks at Good Memories Travel and by VMix. Hello, everyone. I am Matt, and I am back after what seems to be an eternity, but it's only been four weeks. My thanks to Joe for covering me the other week while I was tracking through the North Pole looking for ingredients to make Shelly the perfect wine. But I am back, and tonight we get to take a deep dive into Costa Rica. So if you have questions about the area, the port, and anything to do with Costa Rica, please type them in the comments, and we'll ask our guest, Roy, to answer them a little bit later on in the show. And for those who like to watch the show and how we put the show together, we have launched a new behind-the-scenes camera that looks over my shoulder, and you can see it right over there. And also has the audio from Shelly and Bird on it, so you get to understand what I have to deal with while doing the show live. That link is in the description on Facebook and YouTube. That camera goes live around 7 p.m. every Saturday, so you can watch and understand just how crazy things get around here. But before we go any further, let's take a look at our photo of the week. Our photo of the week comes from the Carnival Vista Galveston Group and features... Lena Dumao having fun on the water in a paddle boat. I always love the water pictures like this where you can see just how clear the water is and just how much fun it could be to get out into the water. Thanks for sending this in, Lena. You can send one into photos at Cruise Week TV or wait to see us post a request in your favorite Facebook news group. Did you know that travel agents can save you money and look out for you? Good Memories Travel is one sure service. When Debbie saw the hard work we were putting in to bring you all the cruise news and information to help others, she wanted to help and support us. And we would ask you to support her next time you book a cruise. Good Memories Travel is a full-service travel agency that offers you cash back and incentives that you won't get booking direct the cruise line. Why would you pay more for less? You can call or visit Good Memories Travel on the web, and it costs you nothing to compare a price and see the superior service and extras you get when you go through Debbie and her team for your next cruise vacation. They cover all the cruise lines, and if you are a new cruiser, they can suggest the best ship and cruise to suit your cruising style. Give Debbie a call or visit their website today and see how much easier and cheaper it can be. Debbie can be reached directly at 321-338-2953 and, of course, to their website at goodmemoriestravel.com. Costa Rica is a rugged, rainforested, Central American country with coastlines on the Caribbean and Pacific. Though its capital, San Jose, is home to cultural institutions like Pre-Columbian Gold Museum, Costa Rica is known for its beaches, volcanoes, and biodiversity. Roughly a quarter of its area is made up of protected jungle, teeming with wildlife including spider monkeys and quetzal birds. So, of course, that makes it a perfect stop for the cruise lines. Currently, the ships that visit Costa Rica from the Carnival Air, the Miracle, the Fantasy, the Valor, the Freedom, the Triumph, and the Glory. Royal Caribbean only has one ship, the Vision of the Seas. So, only one royal ship is usually set to that area. To tell us more about the beautiful place and what you must see when you arrive is local tour guide Roy from Costa Rica Open Tours. Welcome to the show, Roy. Hello there. Thank you for being here. No problem. So tell us a little bit about yourself and your tour company. Well, uh, we are a company of tourism. So we receive uh, people for the whole world here in Costa Rica. Over here, like you says, we will find volcanoes, mountains, national parks, and a lot of kind of animals, three kind of monkeys like uh, holler monkeys, white faced monkeys, spider monkeys. We have uh, at both sides of the country, 
oceans. We have the Caribbean Ocean and Pacific Ocean. So uh, at both places, you will find a lot of fun here. Our culture is uh, for peace. Over here, we don't have army. army so um, this is uh, something important of our country. So I was you have some reading up on Costa Rica. I think Costa Rica is the only country or one of the only countries that does not have an active army that you were just talking about. I thought that was pretty interesting. Yeah, what there's is, one. What is the uh, main language in Costa Rica and what are some common other languages that a lot of people run into when they visit Costa Rica? Over here, we speak Spanish and then we speak English too. Is English pretty common in the area where you can have a lot of conversations with people or will you normally have a lot of English speaking people around ports and tourist areas? Since like 10 years ago, uh, all the kids and children uh, start study in, in the high schools and schools. So start to speak English more right now than than at last. Nice. That's always really nice for a lot of tourists and different people. I know it can be pretty intimidating getting off a ship and trying to have some of the conversations. I know when we visited Mexico and some of the islands, some of the regional dialects are very, very thick and difficult to understand. Uh, so that's pretty neat that a lot of Costa Ricans have that uh, school system where they can institute English in there. So for some of the beaches, I talked about Costa Rica having really amazing beaches. What are some must-see beaches that people have to go to and why are they the best beaches there? Well, over here we will find Manuel Antonio National Park. This is one of the famous uh, national park and beaches here in Costa Rica. You will find mountain national park beaches trails and animals at the same place. In front of this uh, national park, you will find uh, some catamaran that we make a tour, a one day tour and sunset tour. And in this catamaran, you will see wild dolphins. It have eight uh, alcohol drinks included. It have a uh, live music and a lot of things for fun. Nice. So I absolutely love going to the beaches and exploring a lot of the areas. And Costa Rica has a huge rainforest. I believe it's 5% or 20% of the world's rainforest is Costa Rica. I want to say it's about 5%. But maybe it's better to ask you, what is the amount of rainforest in Costa Rica? And are there different tours that people are able to go through the rainforest on the cruise ships? Well, Costa Rica is very tiny, you know. And over here, our 32% of all our territory is protected by national parks. So we save our nature in this way. We will find a rainforest, dry forest, a manglars, mangrove. So what type of biodiversity, different types of animals and plants are really great that people should go to Costa Rica to try to look out for? I know they have a lot of different types of monkeys, capuchins. Are there a specific type of animal that a lot of people really like to see when they're in Costa Rica? Over here, you will find this lot are uh, two tots and three tots, uh, the Caribbean size. Is very interesting animal here in Costa Rica. Uh, lizards, there's a lot of insects, butterflies, wonderful butterflies, uh, birds, a lot of mammals, uh, whales, dolphins, a lot of animals here. Like you says, uh, 5% in whole world of diversity at the plants you will find here in Costa Rica. Are there any tours that are pretty easy to do off of the cruise ship with that, or is it a bit too far away from the ports? Well, when the people arrive here from the cruisers, there's a lot of options to take their uh, the rainforest or another kind of tours. It's available always here. 
what type of tours do you guys normally provide to people? Well, there's two places here important in Costa Rica. I mean, there is Manuel Antonio National Park at the beaches size. I think is the better you will find here for you. If you come here, uh, think about it. And the other place is at the mountains, at the hot spring waters. We will find hot spring waters here in Costa Rica in the mountains with volcanoes. So this is amazing places for visit here. Are the hot springs, are people allowed to go into them or are the temperatures just way too hot where they will have a very bad time if they go in them? There are different uh, kind of, 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 of heat in each uh, temperatures of, of pools. There are a lot of spas and places that you can visit for, for to take a hot spring waters. That sounds like it would be really fun to just kind of go into the hot springs and really just kind of settle down into the hotness of it. I've been to a couple of hot springs before in the past, and they're always really nice and therapeutic. We actually have a couple of questions coming in. This one comes from Ken Jordan. He asks, how many people currently live in Costa Rica? Like five millions. Nice. So it's a pretty small country overall, but it sounds like there is so it much is. different things to do there. So with these you volcanoes, can, you can it's drive even... side to side in five hours. That's it. That's... Side to side at the Caribbean at Pacific in five hours. I think five hours from the bottom of Florida will probably only get you maybe to the middle part of Florida. Florida is a very terrible, terrible place to drive. I hate driving in Florida. Anyway, so Costa Rica has quite a bit of active volcanoes that you're saying with the hot springs. Are there any tours that take you up to the volcanoes or what do you guys kind of do for some of the wildlife in that area? Yeah, all of our volcanoes are protected in national parks. So you have the main entrance, you have uh, uh, people uh, taking care of the places. So you arrive out there, you have all the safe when you arrive you see the volcano but uh, at some distance prudence distance for everybody mm -hmm. uh, right now we have an active volcano is Bukpoas volcano mm -hmm. do you only have one active volcanoes or are there quite a lot of them there no there, there's a lot of volcanoes uh, we have Turrialba volcano active right now mm -hmm. uh, rincon de la vieja uh, active right now barba and poas there's a lot. <laughs> Are there any issues that you guys would be worried about the volcanoes erupting? Are, do you guys have any protocols with that where it's any concern or is it not really too much of an issue that people are worried about in Costa Rica? Long time ago, that doesn't happen nothing, but it can happen, you know? You know, the, mm -hmm. nature, the nature do whatever at the time that she want, but uh for make sure everybody is safe when something of activity happen in some volcano the people who studies volcano says us stop going and don't let us go to visit the volcano or so i absolutely love trying a lot of different types of foods different types of drinks different types of alcohols mm -hmm. What are some of the main staple foods down there in Costa Rica that people just have to try when they're there? Well, there's a lot of, of people of kind of food here. Uh, our typical food for for breakfast, its name is gallo pinto. You, it's it's like rice and beans with some species. This is for breakfast. <laughs> it, it sounds different but uh, the way that we start our day here and we include eggs uh, some toasts uh, cheese bacon orange juice and of course our coffee our coffee is mm -hmm. wonderful here in costa rica i don't know if you hear about it we have an excellent coffee here pretty strong right i've heard some uh I heard, so I, I might be getting Costa Rican coffee confused with another South American coffee, where I heard that mm -hmm. it's kind of thick and not mud-like, but kind of murky, where it's just like a lot of the grounds, or I might be thinking of Portugal. 
I really like coffee, but I usually am terrible at geography, so I kind of get some of the coffees mixed up in that area. Don't worry. <laughs> and so, for al alcohol drinks, you will find a lot of alcohol drinks. Over here, we prepare some some drink whose name is Cacique. Cacique is made about sugar cane, so it's very strong. Mm -hmm. Maybe you arrive at here, you can try. And our national beer is uh, Imperial. A stout it's or a nice beer. I don't drink, but mm -hmm. uh, the people say that is nice. Mm -hmm. Now, the sugar cane alcohol, does that kind of taste similar to tequila or have people described it as tasting kind of similar to tequila? Have you tried before Aguardiente from Mexico? I, Aguardiente? I am not 100% certain. Of taste, but... I've tried uh, quite a bit of alcohol in Mexico. Usually I didn't ask what it was. They're just like, here, try this. Okay. Nice. So, you what don't do remember nothing else. What do you guys normally have for dinner? Like, what's the main type of meat that you guys have down in Costa Rica? Pardon again? What's the main type of food that you guys have for dinner and entrees and, like, the special type of meat down there? Mm-hmm. Well, we will find uh, rice with chicken, uh, some salads, uh, meat, chicken, poultry, uh, pork, uh, much potato, mm, lasagna, a lot of food. I wonder if that's lasagna. I I absolutely love lasagna. So that's interesting. I would is Costa Rican food and culture very similar to Mexico? Because I know a lot of different cruisers are very familiar with Mexico. It's usually one of the main stops that people go visit. What are some of the similarities that you guys have with Mexico and what are some of the differences that make you guys a bit more unique from there? Well, I think in Mexico there is a spicy, very spicy food. At here we don't use a spicy food. And in Mexico, I think um well um, you know there's some something different over here and and there. Can you tell us about some of the museums that are available in Costa Rica? I believe there was a gold museum around there. Yeah, there is a gold museum. Ajayde Museo too. And there's a national museum. There's a lot of museum. If you are in downtown here in Costa Rica, our capital, our state capital, your name is San Jose. Over there, you will find all the museums. With uh, visiting different Costa Rican areas for different cruise lines, this kind of goes into what Sharice Colley was asking. What is the ideal months to visit Costa Rica? When we were talking the pre-show, you mentioned different rainy seasons. So what are some of the better times to visit Costa Rica? I think December until April is, is for summer. So I think it's better in this time. For but the at December... the other time... Go ahead. At the other time, you will find rain season. But out here, we will call the rain the summer and like you guys experience more of the summer during the December area where it's winter in the April, July type of area, or is it kind of inverse? Okay, first the summer. The summer. Uh, for winter, you will get here uh, October, November, and part of December. That's it. Less cold, but not too much over here and you will find at the beaches of the country in the whole country you will find a warm very warm weather mm -hmm. and in the mountains you will find a fresh weather it's a nice what weather type of temperatures does it usually drop down to as a colder temperature down there in florida a cold point here. could be like 35 degrees fahrenheit which is almost snowing no, at you is not as snow, never. So what should people kind of expect during the winter months down there? Does it get pretty cold where you want to wear like just a long rain. shirt or just 
some days a lot of rain a lot a lot of rain you will find a lot of rain some days like one or two or maybe a week raining a lot mm -hmm. so would it be best to bring an umbrella when you visit costa rica then uh-huh if you come in rain season umbrella for sure are there any good souvenirs to get while you're in costa rica when i visited some of the other ports let's say belize they are known for their hot sauce Mahogany Bay is known for their mahogany statues. What's a good souvenir that people should look out for when they're in uh, Costa Rica? A souvenir. A what? Could you, again, please, the, the question? Yep, no problem. What is a good souvenir for someone to get while they're in Costa Rica? For example, like a hot sauce, or if you guys are known for clothing, what's something that someone mm -hmm. should go down to Costa Rica to try to buy? Sure. The hammocks. Hammock. You will find okay. here the yeah, wonderful hammocks for your are backyard. They usually, are they normally handmade by a lot of the people in Costa Rica? Yeah, made by handmade. Yeah. How much would that normally cost if you want to buy a hammock in Costa Rica? Like thirty dollars, maybe. Is that U.S. or U.S.? Yes. Okay, that's not too bad for a price. So, with getting yes. off of the ship, sometimes it's a bit tricky to get to the city areas just by walking. How much of a taxi drive will it be to get from the ships to the city? About how much will it cost, and about what time frame do you think it'll take to get there? Well, I think it depends on the place that you are going for true but mm -hmm. maybe it's better if you when arrive at the place talk to somebody for see what do you can do over there you will find some tour operators that they will show you what to do or mm -hmm. offer you some things or tours for for to take so i think is the correct way to do the things for make safe for everybody for some of the eco spots of Costa Rica, are there any areas that people should try to avoid because it's just really protected and you're not allowed to go there because it's very sensitive with the type of plants and animals that might be living there? All of national parks is very protected. You cannot uh, uh, cut or uh, extract uh, plants or animals over there. You can go by jail if you do this. Do you guys have any types of zoos where people can go to the areas and see the animals a lot easier, or are zoos not very common? Yes, we have zoos. We have like three zoos, and there is a place who have waterfalls, and we will find the, the pumas, the monkeys, the butterflies, the hummingbirds. I really like going to different types of zoos and really seeing a lot of the types of animals that live in them. Uh, some of the tours down there, I've heard about bird tours where they play different sounds to attract specific types of birds. Do you guys have any different types of bird tours or monkey tours or do you just kind of go around and see what you try to find? We have tours about bird watching. A lot of tours of bird watching at mountain and at the beaches, at the coast. And um, you will find a lot of, of animals too. Okay, Roy, uh, where can we find out a little bit more information about your tour company? Well, we have a website. I don't know if you can show. Yeah, this is Costa Rica Open Tour.com. If you're going to visit our country, it's going to be a pleasure to show you our country that because Costa Rica is for everybody. Well, thank you, Roy, so much for coming on the show. We really appreciate you being here and talking about Costa Rica. Thank you for inviting me. For its newest ship, the Carnival Horizon, Carnival's in-house entertainment team has partnered with creative directors from Broadway, Los Angeles, and London's West End to create three brand new shows for the ship. 
Soulbound, Celestial Strings, and Vintage Pop will debut on Carnival Horizon when it enters service in April of 2018. A fourth show, Amor Cubano, a Caribbean dance romance, is also being performed on the Carnival Horizon following an incredible debut on the Carnival Vista last year. Soulbound is hosted by the Soul Catcher. This fun, high-energy show offers a gothic-inspired journey through New Orleans with stops at recognizable Crescent City landmarks like a haunted paddle wheel ship, an apothecary shop, and a cemetery hide by levitating chairs and other spooky, stunning illusions. Celestial Strings merges the beauty of classical music with modern pop that takes place in an elegant and enchanted garden that seamlessly transforms from season to season. Stimulating the senses with unbelievable visual imagery, 3D cast interactions, and aroma-infused sets to bring the garden to life. Vintage Bop takes viewers back to the Great Gatsby and Cotton Club era with contemporary songs, featuring a toe-tapping six-piece live band performing in a modern-day speakeasy, highlighted by a burlesque number of vintage pop ends with a rollicking after party in the atrium where guests can dance and interact with the flappers and the zoot suit outfitted cast members. Amor Cubano is a Caribbean dance romance. This show blends classic Latin songs with today's hits and features authentic reproduction of Horizon's Havana Bar. The show is highlighted by a seven-piece Cuban-inspired band that performs songs by Gloria Estefan, Celia Cruz, and others amid a tropical, multi-hued backdrop of Cuba and Miami. So four new shows on the horizon for you guys all to enjoy. I am really excited and can't wait to actually see these happen. The Carnival Fascination resumed its year-round schedule of seven-day Southern Caribbean departures from San Juan this past Sunday, following an extensive multi-million dollar dry dock that added a variety of popular food and beverage concepts. Catching up to the rest of the fleet with Guy's Burgers, Red Frog Rum Bar, Blue Iguana Cantina, where they have those amazing little fish tacos that I absolutely love. The Tequila Bar, Sushi Express, and the bar I wanted to turn into my personal cabin and my next cruise, the Alchemy Bar. Gotta love those cucumber sunrises. Oh, and for the three people that actually use it, they have also upgraded the gym. I think that is true speak for dusting off the workout gear and rearranging it a little bit. I mean, post a one in the comments if you guys actually use the gym on a cruise ship. I know I would absolutely, you know, like to use the gym, but I just don't. Running around with Bird and the camera gear is more than enough workout for me. And I work out my liver plenty as well. <laughs> It feels like I have been torn away from Shally for so long, but we are finally reunited. I am sorry I couldn't find you the ingredients to make you that perfect one. I guess you'll just have to keep buying it from a 7-Eleven. But anyway, I know you want us to tell us about all the different types of cruises you can take from your long history of cruising, starting with the Titanic's first voyage. Shally? First of all... 7-Eleven. I don't shop at 7-Eleven. I buy my uh, wine in a box at Costco. Thank you very much. <laughs> don't do 7-Eleven. Are you drinking? Oh, that's your Gatorade nice tea. Ugh, it that has sounds electrolytes. It's what plants crave, Shally. Yeah, <laughs> you're not a plant, my Mad, and that looks terrible. Ugh. I Sean never said Vodka it tasted that. good. Ooh. Well, I'm so glad you're back. Poor Joe. He couldn't get a word in edgewise on the last show. You're going to have to learn him how to butt in when I'm talking too much. <laughs> I know. We had I think to, if, Joe almost quit. He's like, I don't know how you deal with Chally, Matt. I'm so worried she was threatening me before with wine. And I don't know. So we had to get Joe therapy. That, That's those why are lies. There were no threats involved. I assure you. <laughs> But uh, poor guy on the little messenger thing, he was like, I can't get a word in. <laughs> like, you you got to just butt your way in, dude. You just got to butt your way in. So um, <clears throat> before we start talking about the show, I do want to talk about something that I'm really excited about. So um, I formed a cruising rock band. And the name of my band is Shally and the Starfish Funkadelic uh, in honor of <laughs> George Clinton, of course, and the Parliament Funkadelic. Um, we filmed a very crude rock music video 
uh, on board uh, a catamaran with Adrian Cozumel when we were in Cozumel on uh, Carnival Cruisers Past, Present, Future, fourth annual group cruise. Um, Bird was able to miraculously transform this video into a much better, slightly less ridiculous uh, performance. It was one of the funnest days of my life, and I got to do it with some really amazing people. Um, I just want to give them a shout out real quick to Javia Shaw, Kim, Makeda, Stephen, Jack, Rose, Nicole, Dolores, Dwayne, Mike, Julia, my husband, Nick, for wearing those gold metallic pants, honey. I love you for doing that. Uh, my dad, Frank, uh, Sir William, Adrian Cozumel, Paula and Shannon on camera. Uh, a special thanks to the crew of the Andiamo, uh, one with Adrian and also uh, our wonderful uh, Charles Bird over here. Zach did the uh, whatever name you go by this week uh, was our producer. So please check out our video. Go to YouTube. Bird has the link down here or you can just search at YouTube. There's only one shally and the starfish funkadelic so you shouldn't be too hard to find Any so we already have like, be too much we have like 300 views already i mean i think i'm gonna go viral i'm excited so but anyway so on to the show uh, if we this lose week, shally as our co-host it's because she's made it on american idol I, i'm it i'm i'm like they're gonna be signing me up with a contract and everything mm -mm -mm. but um so anyway, this week we're going to talk about the different types of cruises that you can take um, on Carnival. Again, I'm not super educated on any other cruise lines. Normally, our she, uh, Matt and I talk about Carnival and things related to Carnival. So uh, this is just applying to them. There's a lot more out there than just your typical three to seven day cruise. So that's what we're going to talk about tonight. Um, the first one I was going to mention was what we call a back to back cruise. So a back-to-back -back cruise is when you book a sailing on the same ship uh, for the week before or the week after your initial sailing. So I have had a lot of friends that have done these. I have not been fortunate enough to do that because, you know, that's going to, well, I mean, if you did a four-day back-to-back, that's an eight-day cruise. But um, a lot of times it's a week-long cruise and they'll do a back-to-back. -back, so it makes sure, you know, it turns it into a 14-day cruise. That actually might be a good question to ask someone. Is it more cost-effective to do a back-to-back four-day cruise or a eight-day cruise altogether? Well, I don't know if it's really more cost effective because honestly, I talked to our travel agent about it to see, you know, what was the deal with the pricing and things. And unfortunately, they really don't cut you any slack necessarily. I mean, mm -hmm. it may turn out to be if you got a really good deal on a four day cruise and you did a back to back and you got an eight day cruise. Uh, and then you're uh, but booking the seven day cruise might have been a little bit more. You might find, you know, doing your research, doing, you know, really like looking in and being flexible with your dates and things. You could probably find situations, but um, booking a back to back doesn't necessarily mean you're going to get a discount on it or you're going to get a better deal, mm -hmm. um, you know. But a lot of people like to just stretch it out. Um, <clears throat> Uh, you don't have the, the one thing about a back to back. So uh, if you book your back to back at the same time, some people book a cruise and then decide later they oh, well, let's do the week after or let's do the week before. But if you knew beforehand and you booked a back to back at the same time, chances are you'll be in the same cabin for both legs of your cruise. Mm -hmm. um, now, if you book your uh, the second leg of your cruise and you didn't book it right away, you may have to change cabins. Uh, but the only thing you really have to do is you do have to walk off the ship uh, and go through customs again. Uh, but you don't have to bring your belongings with you, just your identification. And then if you do have to change cabins and your cabin steward and the crew and everything, they'll help you move all of your stuff uh, to your new cabin. And you can um, bring on an additional bottle of wine because it is the start of a new ship and you're allowed to bring on is, another exactly. bottle of wine. So, I mean, it's, exactly. it's like yeah, a You're starting right a new there. cruise. Right, right. You're booking it's the, uh, the next it. cruise. <laughs> so, yeah, definitely. Top there you stone. go. It's all worth it over that bottle of wine too bad you can't bring the box you know man that would be so much better when you start um, to like really so, compress that liquid into one bottle just let me know 
<laughs> so uh, that brings us to the next one, which is instead of a back to back, they call it a side to side cruise. So basically you are doing a back to back cruise, but this time you've gotten off one ship and gotten onto another on the same day that you got back from uh, the cruise before. Um, on a cruise like that, of course, you're still going to go through all the same custom procedures, embark and debark and everything, because you're actually going to get off of one ship and turn around and walk onto another ship. Um, I've not done this either, but I think that um, I would book, uh, you know, I would try to make sure that, um, so like down here in Galveston, say one of our ships, uh, it does several weeks in a row. It'll do the same itinerary. It'll go to Honduras, Belize, and Cozumel. Every week it does the same thing. But somewhere in there it'll it'll change and then it'll do Jamaica, uh, Cozumel, and Grand Cayman. So I would definitely try to make my, if I was going to do a side-to-side -side or a back-to-back, that the second leg of my cruise would not be the same three ports that I just went and saw. I so you'd want to make sure that, that, yeah, that you timed it the right way to where mm -hmm. you, the, the, like it was the last week of one itinerary and it was the beginning week of the next itinerary so that you could go for, to six different ports. For people watching it, let me know. Cause there might be some people who really like specific ports of call. Would you prefer to do two of the same cruises, which is visiting the same exact ports that you visited on the previous one, and then literally the next cruise? So, you know, the four day cruise, you go to Cozumel, the next one, the next one, and then go to the same ports, or would you rather go to different ports? To me, I feel like a lot of the ports get very similar to each other, especially a lot of the Caribbean island ones. However, if I had the chance to go back to Belize in a future cruise, I might be willing to do the same ports of call. Like when I was on the Carnival Magic, I really liked going to Costa de Maya and Cozumel and Belize. And Mahogany Bay was just meh, but I really enjoyed those ports of call. So I think... I would be tempted to do the same ports of call again to try well, to you can look at it again like if you did the same ports mm -hmm. of call then you could do two different excursions in each one you could do two different things that you might want to do because of course you only have time for one excursion while you're there under normal circumstances but if you're going right back you could pick another one or you look and look at it like this the first half of your cruise could be doing the excursions and getting off the ship. And then the second half of your cruise, you don't even have to get off the ship if you don't want to. <laughs> mm -hmm. I mean, you have the whole ship to yourself. You've already been to the port. You could just make it the, the total relaxation leg of your cruise. Or if you want to just exhaust yourself, and do everything you possibly can, then do your back to back with mm -hmm. two different itineraries so that every, the, like for six days out of your 14 day cruise, you're getting off the ship and you're seeing a brand new place. Exactly. It just depends probably on your energy level, probably. I mean, so. with the same ports, one of the other benefits of it is if you forget it in the port, there may be a chance that you can go back to the same <laughs> port and find one of your items that you lost. I know. Or I if you just forgot to time. buy something. Or exactly. if you just like, there, there's been times when I meant to get a specific souvenir and I don't know what I was thinking, or maybe I had to be, mm -hmm. I mean, I know it's impossible that I might've had to as a drink, but maybe I just forgot something, you know, and then like, oh, I can go back and get it. So, um, so the next thing we'll talk about is what we call a, a transatlantic or a TA cruise. So, um, most of your big cruise line, most of your cruise ships are going to be built in Barcelona or, or, or in Italy. So once a ship's building is complete, the ship will set sail on its maiden voyage. Um, this cruise requires one way airfare to Europe. Now you're not going to get a uh, round trip airfare, of course, because, um, you're going to fly one way to Europe, but you're going to end up in the United States. So then you would fly from wherever you ended up in the United States. Um, so anyway, uh, most of these cruises are a minimum 14 days. They're usually more like 19 to 21, something like that. Um, you'll start out, you'll fly into Barcelona most of the time. You'll start out with a Mediterranean cruise. Uh, after your Mediterranean cruise, then you'll cross the Atlantic, which takes a few days. And then once you cross the Atlantic, then you'll head to your Caribbean part of your cruise. And then after that, 
um, they uh, then after your Caribbean cruise, then they're going to take your ship and they're going to park her in her new home. Uh, you know, most of the time, a brand new ship is going to end up in Miami. Not all the time, but most of the time, the brand new one will end up in Miami first. Mm-hmm. So, the, you know, the example would be you're going to fly to Barcelona and then you're going to fly home from Miami. Or if yeah. you live in Miami, great, then you're already there. Um, or you do a back-to-back transatlantic for like a month. Right. If well, you've got that yeah, money, but they wouldn't I mean. do that because they would they wouldn't do that because then they would have to be taking the ship back to Europe, mm. right? I mean, they they got to keep it here. <laughs> Although you could do the next itinerary out of Miami, is that what you're saying? Like you could, yeah, then you exactly. do, Oh my God, that would be a really long cruise. Uh, Dwayne, Dwayne, and Eric did uh, the, uh, South Pacific. You fly into Hawaii, and then from Hawaii, you do a, a Hawaiian cruise then you do tahiti bora bora and fiji and then from there you end up in sydney australia and then you fly home from sydney and then the next group of people they would have flown into sydney done in reverse and then they end up in hawaii and i think that was a 21 day cruise that they went on can you imagine how much cheers would cost for 21 days (laughs) <laughs> I've seen like the year round cruises. The cheers on that is like fifty five thousand dollars. But I'm thinking I mean, to myself, I'm like, oh, that's I like know. Carry the one, do the math. Uh, I mean, my seriously liver though. Go bad? But even but, just twenty one days, I would be wondering if after that, Malong, if I'd even want to have a drink. I'd be like, just bring me water, just bring me water, and an ice cold Coca Cola. And with some crispy ice in it, that would be good. But anyway, okay. So, any questions? Are we moving along? Uh, we have kind of a comment from Cherise. Let me post that up there. She says, "In different ports, that's the there's a whole world out there to explore and experience, and we would definitely go back if we really like that." Completely agree. Well, and that's the thing about a port. I mean, there's so much to do in one port. And if it's the only cruise you've ever been on, you get to pick one thing. Mm -hmm. But doing it back to back, you you get to do two things if you went back. But I still, and this is only uh, coming from my opinion because I've been on so many cruises. If I did a back to back, I would want it to be six different ports because mm-hmm. the 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 chances are I've already been to the three ports we're going to in exactly. the first place, and I don't want to do them six more times. So <laughs> I would mm-hmm. probably choose uh, wh- whenever the ship did an itinerary change. Um, the next uh, the next uh, one we're looking at here is what we call. Um, a uh, repositioning cruise. Uh, just to say about the transatlantic cruises, the transatlantic, the repositioning, the journeys cru- cruises, um, the best way to find out uh, how to book one of those cruises is to go to Carnival. It, it, first of all, if you have a travel agent, ask your travel agent. Uh, or if you go to carnival.com and search in the FAQ area, um, all you need to look for really you do you just uh you put in um uh journey cruise or you put in uh transatlantic uh and it will bring up some search criteria for you to find cruises that do those type of itineraries so this one is the repositioning cruise uh this cruise is generally a 10 or more day cruise so when a ship is moving from one port to another let's say they're moving the ship from Miami to Galveston. Um, They have to move the ship there. So they turn this into a cruise. Um, You'd fly one way, let's say you'd fly into Miami to take the cruise and then you'd have to fly home from Galveston if that were the case where they were moving the ship to. Um, A lot of people in CCPPF who've done this say that they offer a lot of great deals for a repositioning cruise. And a lot of times they uh, include ports that you may have not traveled to. So maybe some of the less, um, uh, not I won't say less popular, just uh, not as common a Mm -hmm. port uh, that they would include include in that the like easiest way to find it florida a, not a lot of yeah really i mean just something keys. a little different than your normal you know where people don't I'm go uh, exactly. well, you know it seems like cozumel is on every single itinerary just about mm-hmm. here so the easiest way to find a repositioning cruise is to ask your travel agent order go to the carnival website and filter your search for 10 plus day cruise and look for the one-way cruises. Now, what a one-way cruise on the map, the way it's going to show it, it's going to have, um, 
and normally it would have a straight line and it would circle the port and that would mean that you know it's just a regular cruise the, if the cruise just has the red line the straight line to the port and there's no circle around it that indicates that it's a one-way cruise so that would mean that this was one of the repositioning cruises uh, that you're going to uh, fly out of one or you're going to leave out of one port and end up in another one because normally you would leave out of one port and return to mm -hmm. the same port. Um, the uh, There's two more cruises left that uh, one's called the Journeys Cruises. The Carnival Journeys Cruise provides a unique cruise experience for guests who sail on select cruises for nine days or longer. These sailings will offer unique ports of call, including now your journey cruises are going to be your Panama Canal, your Alaska, your Hawaii, and your extended exotic Caribbean ports. Um, the easiest way to find, and also on the journey cruises, they said they do a lot of throwback stuff. They do a lot of like old school cruise stuff, like the old timey midnight buffet that they hmm. used to do that they don't do anymore and, and stuff like that, that, that they do a lot of extra stuff on these cruises mm -hmm. that they don't offer on the others. We've actually and the easiest had several different, uh, guests come on recently. Um, gosh, I can't remember his name, but when I was interviewing the person from Alaska, he was telling us about the journeys cruise up there. And I think yeah. we've had a couple of them on the show. So if you guys are not interested only are in that, the, go back in the show. Not only are the ports unique, but also the onboard activities on the ship mm -hmm. are some things that, um, you know, that they used to do a long time ago and they don't do so much anymore or, and they have more activities than normal. Um, I exactly. was reading through the carnival website, getting some information, all kinds of fun activities. I'm sure they're all listed in your fun times. And it's um, not just your typical, let me go to a beach on the, this tropical right right either. i mean it's we're talking about a pan a going different. through the panama canal going through the locks um we're talking about you know like the hawaiian islands and doing mm -hmm. the south pacific and things like that so uh and the journey sailings the the easiest way to find a journey's cruise is of course ask your travel agent or search in the faq section of carnival.com search uh journey sailings and uh any uh, cruises that are set to be on a journey's cruise will come up in your search. And then the last thing we have is that Carnival does offer charters. Um, you know, you you pretty much got to be a pretty big company in order to charter an entire cruise ship for just your company, but it does happen a lot. Um, many companies and organizations will charter an entire ship. Is, this can range anywhere from a big company holding a conference to an organization funding cancer research uh, to the naked and over 50 group having an all nude cruise. I mean, <laughs> the, there's all kinds of weird charters. There's charters that um, have uh, um, concerts where, you know, they, they have uh, the whole cruise is centered around. My friend Stephanie would love this. They have the new kids on the block cruise every year or something. <laughs> But anyway, See, Shelley, I was Stephanie, always wondering in your 40s. why it's time Bird to give up wasn't the new kids inviting the me to uh, some of these cruises that he went on. So I'm starting to notice maybe was he on the over on 50 these... all nude cruise? I bet I, he was. I, mean, I don't know. He he has the camera over his shoulders, so you can't really tell. Yeah, it's, you it's... never know what he's doing over there. You know, as a hairdresser, I've even there's been several times. Um, there's a, a, a huge nationwide uh, be, a professional beauty supply company called Armstrong McCall, mm -hmm. and they charter a carnival ship every year uh, for continuing education and on the ship like they'll have all kinds of conferences and, and continue education for hairstylists mm. and, 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 uh, hair classes and color shows and, and that the whole ship is nothing but hairdressers. So they do stuff like that all the time. But like I said, Matt, it's coming a day when we're going to, we're going to charter an entire ship just for CCPPF. I, I can feel it. It's going to happen. We're going to have our own ship and we're going to take it over. Is it going to be a new cruise or is it going to be like, uh, no. you must be disintoxicated to leave your cabin? You, there won't be everybody. It, it will be clothing optional. Let's just, let's just make it good for everybody. And then it can be optional whether or not you decided to go that route. <laughs> But anyway, so that's that's my info for tonight. So check out there's a, you know again there's always a lot more to cruising than you might realize. There's a lot more options out there for you than you might realize. So do a little research. Go to CCPPF. Ask all your questions. Uh, we have 160,000 plus members in there ready with an answer. 
to help you with all of your cruising needs. And don't forget to go to YouTube and look up Shally and the Starfish Funkadelic and check out our live rock music video because we're, we're rocking it. There's the link. Where's everybody? Oh, <laughs> oh did y'all leave me? <laughs> uh, so, moving along. So, our cruise show and all of the wonderful abilities we have to bring in guests from really wouldn't be possible at the level we do without vMix. vMix is our live production software that powers our live show and many other high-end productions from church services to football games. More and more live productions run on vMix. What our producer Bird really liked when he was trying to improve our show was that they give you a full 60-day trial of everything. That way you can test it risk-free before you buy for two full months. Then they have systems starting from just $350 up to $1,500, depending on your production requirements. If you're going to do any sort of serious live streaming, you need vMix. Try it at vMix.com today. Costa Rica is home to a rich variety of plants and animals. Well, the country has only about 0.03% of the world's landmass and contains 5% of the world's biodiversity. Around 25% of the country's land area is in protected national parks and protected areas. The largest percentages of protected areas in the world. Developing world average is 13%, while developed world average can also be about 8%. Costa Rica has successfully managed to diminish deforestation from some of the worst rates in the world from 1973 to 1989 to almost zero by 2005. One national park, Cocobaro National Park, is internationally renowned among ecologists for its biodiversity, which include big cats and tapirs, and is where visitors can expect to see an abundance of wildlife. Corcovado is one park in Costa Rica where all four Costa Rican monkey species can be found. These include the white-headed capuchin, the mantled howler, the endangered Joffrey spider monkey, and the Central American squirrel monkey, found only in the Pacific coast of Costa Rica and a small part of Panama, and considered endangered until 2008 when its status was upgraded to vulnerable. Deforestation, illegal pet trading, and hunting are the main reasons for its threatened status. Porturigo National Park, the name of Porturigo, can be translated, if I pronounce it correctly, which I probably did not, so I apologize, as full of turtles. It is home to the spider howler and white-throated capuchin monkeys, the three-toed sloth, the two-toed sloth, 320 species of birds, and a variety of reptiles. The park is recognized for the annual nesting of the endangered green turtle and the most important nesting site for the species. Giant leatherback, hawksbill, and loggerhead turtles also nest there. The Mancha Verde Cloud Forest Preserve is home to about 2,000 plant species, including numerous orchids. Over 400 types of birds and more than 100 species of mammals can be found there. Over 840 species of birds have been identified in Costa Rica as the case of much of Central America. The avian species of Costa Rica are a mix of North and South American species. The country's abundant fruit trees, many of which bear fruit year-round, are hugely important to the birds, some of whom survive on diets that consist only of one or two types of fruit. Some of the country's most notable avian species include the rib rib uh, resplendent Quetzal, some of these names, by the way, guys, I'm really tried here, so bear with me. The Scarlet Macaw, Three Waddled Bellbird, a Bear Necked Umbrella Bird, and the Keel Build Toucan. The Instituto Nacional de Biodiversidad is allowed to collect royalties on any biological discoveries of medical importance. Costa Rica is a center of biological diversity for reptiles and amphibians, including the world's fastest running lizard, the spiny tailed iguana. Remember, we have many past videos available for you to watch at our website at cruiseweek.tv, which has links to our t shirt pages and support pages as well if you would like to help us out with funding for our season two trip. Or if you would like to advertise on the show, you can do that with the links from our site. 
If you know someone who will enjoy watching the show as much as you, be nice and share the link to their Facebook wall so they too can enjoy it. Please like and subscribe to our YouTube channel and Facebook pages. Just doing that alone really helps show our sponsors the support we have and helps keep the show alive each week. Plus, you get entered to win in some great crew swag drawings. Joe is back next week with another fun show overing about more of your questions in cruising and how to get the best fuck out of your cruise dollar. Till then, I will see all of you for our midweek show, which is a nice casual show every Wednesday about 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. But until then, I'll see you on the ships.